very much for being our guest. It's great to be with you, Leanne. Thank you. What is your response to, to what the South African Medical Association is saying about the campaign? Well, the first thing is that the South African Medical Association does not speak for many, many doctors. I've had responses from a large number of doctors who say they support this all the way. The big problem is that people aren't getting tested, and of the people who do get tested, the vast majority are women who are going, for example, to antenatal clinics and other places where they have the routine testing with the opt-out clause. And so only 30% of people who get tested are the men, and as Erin Motswaledi, who is our health minister, said, most HIV is spread by men and most HIV is suffered by women. So the major challenge is to get everybody tested. Now, there is still a major stigma attached to being tested for HIV. So we thought that if we set up this lucky draw, this competition, people can go and say, well, I'm going to be tested because there's this lucky draw and there's no stigma attached to that. Mm. So it really is a very good way of removing the stigma. It's working fantastically well. It was devised after we had a workshop with Harvard economists who explained to us a whole lot about behavioral economics. And this is our first pilot in the field of behavioral economics, and it's working very well. Yeah. Um, again, just, just speaking about this, uh, the, the South African Medical Association, they were saying that um, medical practitioners were not actually consulted before you went ahead and did something like this. What was the procedure in the lead up to this campaign? Of course they were consulted. We have very top doctors in the Western Cape. We have a professor of medicine leading our health department. There was a lot of consultation. And the South African Medical Association, especially under Dr. Ramatuba, has made statements that are so contradictory that they don't make sense. I was on a radio debate with Dr. Ramatuba, and really the, the, the points that were made were completely illogical. And what is entirely unethical is the South African Medical Association encouraging people not to get tested. That is completely unethical. There is absolutely nothing unethical about our particular project here in the Western Cape, and in fact it's had a green light from medico ethicists. Mm. In terms of the money, where will this actually come from? Well, it's got our, coming from our budget of the 16 days of activism for no violence against women and children. We focus on a new issue each year, and this year it is the trauma suffered by women and children through the spread of HIV and AIDS. And we always have a budget for this particular time of year, and it's certainly much more productive to spend it in this way than it is in having parties and events and functions and food and travel and transport, etc. Yeah. Uh, again, getting back to your original, uh, you were saying that the campaign has been uh, well received. Have you found that a lot more people are testing now that this campaign is about as to previous years? Oh yes, absolutely. And we've set up special sites for the testing so that people don't overload our clinic system. And many people are going to the clinics to be tested, thinking that they can qualify for the draw there. And over and above the clinics, we have huge numbers of people coming to our testing centers. So it's very good, very successful. And I think in a couple of years, it'll be taken as standard practice. Yeah. We've had a lot of response. the pioneers. Someone has to. All right. We've had a lot of response from viewers out there, as, as I've seen that you had a lot of responses on Twitter when, when it was announced, yes. and I saw you coming out and responding to many of them. But some people are saying that, uh, that, that uh, you know, a lot of it criticized the campaign, saying it created an impression that only poor people in the Western Cape don't know their status. Now, what is your response to something like this? That is so absurd that I can't understand the logic of it. The fact is that everybody's name goes into the draw if they would like to fill in that separate form. It's not the same form. Their status remains absolutely confidential, and we have the testing sites all over the Western Cape in every community, and we're getting good entries from everywhere. So that's absolute nonsense. In terms of South Africa's fight against HIV, do you think we're moving in the right direction? We had uh, World AIDS Day on the 1st of December. A lot of figures are coming out. What, what are your views? Well, until we focus on behavior change, we will be in denial. And we still aren't going to do that in any meaningful way. And the bottom line is that South Africans don't want to face the fact that without behavior change, we're not going to get any meaningful impact on HIV and AIDS. And we have to keep on hammering that. And we've got to encourage people to know their status. And then we've got to make sure that people who are negative stay negative and people who are positive take personal responsibility for ensuring that they don't spread the virus, that they can live a stigma-free life. They're entitled to that. And they become role models if they take personal responsibility. Do you think that a campaign that you have got and implemented with 
within your province is something that perhaps could work nationwide by encouraging people with, uh, like you're saying, the monetary prize, if you want to say that, just for, for going out and getting tested. Is that an incentive that you think could possibly work and make more people get tested in the country? Absolutely it could, and I think it will become standard practice. But one of the illogical arguments that the South African Medical Association used was that they couldn't implement this in the rest of the country. And what would they do if people said to them in another province, well, how about implementing that here? I said, that's not my problem. We've got the capacity here. We've built that capacity. We can, in fact, test everybody who comes forward and provide them with free antiretrovirals. That's what we want to do. Because if people test positive early enough, they can live a long and healthy life because the Western Cape government will provide them with free antiretrovirals. It is not our problem if people in other provinces got the government they voted for. Mm. Let's talk about the figures within, uh, within the province that you're in, uh, Western Cape. HIV and AIDS, how, is the, how serious is the situation there? Well, you know, one case of HIV is one too many, so we're trying to bring it down. And I'm delighted to say that the Western Cape is the only province that has more than halved HIV transmissions since 2002. And it's all because of the policies the DA put into place when we were briefly in government in the late 1999 and early 2000s. Hmm. Uh, plans going forward, something like this, is this a, a once-off event that you're going to be doing with this 50,000 rand or is it something that you will be doing at a more regular basis and other plans that you have to try and uh, get rid of and drop figures within your province even more? Well, I've said repeatedly that this is a pilot project. We use the 16 days of activism every year to run a pilot project. And the pilot project we did last year for maintenance for children and women from maintenance default has worked extremely well and it's been carried on all year. We will assess this pilot project at the end of the 16 days and then we will determine whether we carry it on next year. Okay. My hunch at the moment is that we will. Sure. Well, let's, let's see how it goes. So you say that uh, the ninth, this actually comes to an end now, this particular one, uh, this campaign Correct. is going to be coming to an end. What about research? Is there enough uh, money going towards the research for HIV and AIDS? Yes, I think there's a lot of money going into research. It's very sad that the vaginal gel has found, been found not to be effective. But the bottom line is this. Even if we find a cure for AIDS, and even if we find the right kind of vaccine, we still have to change behavior. Yeah. Multiple concurrent sexual partners leads to many teenage pregnancies, leads to broken families, leads to poor parenting, leads to entrenching poverty, leads to a vicious social cycle that undermines development. Unless we change those behavior patterns, we cannot develop as a society, whether AIDS is there or not. And that is not a moralizing statement. I'm not being moralistic. I want South Africa to develop. And until we change those sexual behavior patterns, we can't. All right, let's leave it there for this morning. And with that message from Helen Ziller, the Western Cape Premier and the leader of the DA, thank you very much for joining us here on Morning Live to talk about this campaign uh, in our Cape Town studios and uh, talking about that 50,000 rand uh, lucky winner who tests at one of the allocated testing stations. And according to Helen Ziller, the Premier, this is something that's working. More people are getting tested and uh, they're going out there to find out their status. Perhaps one way of trying to bring these figures down within South Africa. Again, 